Hey guys, back with another Supercoach video in the first round after the buys, and I get my best score of the season so far, very happy with that. I scored 2,379, moving me up 1,209 spots to 2,033 overall, very happy with that. Hopefully I can get to the top 1,000 by the end of the season. It's going to be difficult of course, but if I can I'll be very pleased. And again, I won... Four out of four league matchups, so that's always good. Onto the team. In defense, Sam Doherty with the 120, continuing to prove why he's the number one defender. No one can get close to him at the moment. Taylor Adams with a 99. Sucks a in ton up, but still a good score. Rory Laird and Dylan Robertson, 72 and 81 respectively. Both pretty disappointing, in particular Rory Laird, but I'm sure they will both bounce back. Zach Tui with an 89, got a lot of the ball, got a couple of big goals in the third quarter, gave up I think three frees, so it could have been a mid-90 score right there, but we'll still take it. Nick Newman with a 90, didn't get as much of the ball, I think only 13 touches around, but did get a couple of big goals, in particular won the fourth quarter, which got them back to within a goal, that definitely boosted his score. And once again, we'll definitely take it. I'll talk about Tui and Newman later on during trades. Got a big decision to make there. On the bench, Luke Ryan, only the 49. And Tom Stewart, all those 48 points came in the first half, which is unfortunate. Well, unfortunate that he got injured, of course. Could have been a great score from him, especially from a cast perspective, because he was really cementing his spot in the side. He really looked like he belonged in the cat side and it's just unfortunate that he, now he's out for a while. In the midfield, Paddy Dangerfield just does what he does. Scored 145, was massive in the Cats comeback victory against Freo. Tom Mitchell, 101. I'll take it from him. Would have liked a little more though. Did get a big goal in the fourth quarter. Marcus Bontempelli with a 139. It's good to see him finally turn up. For the first time since round 7, and I got his vice-captain double points. Of course, Danger scored more, but just can't pass up on 139. Scott Pendlebury, the 109. I'll take it, but like Mitchell, would have liked a little more out of him. Josh Kennedy, the 127. He was huge against the Bombers. Got reward for it. Joel Selwood with the 3, and... Fortunately, I couldn't escape the carnage, with many having beams still, and many having Zorko, only got five touches for the whole game, but thought things were going well, but Joel Selwood got concussed in the first minute of the game, at the cop the three, stopped me from getting what could have been 24.50, but what can you do? Hopefully he gets up for a game against the Giants Saturday night, but... Health does come first. If you can't play, then you can't play. You just got to accept it. Paddy Cripps with a 134. Very, very happy with him. Jake Lloyd, new recruit with a 99. Happy with him as well. And on the bench, Mount Finn Brown, 46 and 43. In the rocks, Brody Grundy with a 93. Happy with him. And Toby Nankervis, 62. And I'm not sure what it is. If, is it a niggle or is his tank just starting to really empty at this point. Is his tank emptying? That's the real question right now. It's, it's pretty worrying. I was expecting to keep him for the rest of the season, but now we'll have to see. Because it's out of probably Greenwood and then Curvis. One of them will turn into Gorn next week. I'm just not sure who. I would prefer to keep Nan Curvis just because Greenwood's a rookie and I'm not, just not sure if I can trust him at this point, But although that 127 says otherwise. But that will be that will be a decision for next week. In the forward line, Elliot Yeo, the 94, pretty happy with him. Jack McRae with a 122, very happy with him. Got a big tackle in the dying seconds against North Melbourne to stop their final charge. Score probably got boosted by quite a bit there. Luke Dahlhouse with a 103, good to see him turn up. Toby Green with a 127. And 
It's good to see him with four straight goals, rather than that zero goals, five that he got against Carlton. Isaac Heaney with a 104, happy with him. And Hugh Greenwood with a 127, very, very happy with him. He's going to make some really good cash if I am to trade him out. And like I said earlier, it's uh, probably going to be out of Greenwood and then Curvis. I trade out for Gorn next week, but uh, I'll have a bit of time to think about that. And on the bench, Bolton, only the 39, pretty disappointing. And Parsons got a couple of big goals, finished on an 82, very, very happy with that. And on to trades. So as you can see there, I only have four trades left. Like I said, past few weeks now, cutting it pretty close. Probably only have that one trade left by the time I get the full premium, which I'll use on luxury upgrade or an injury trade if I'm forced to for a long-term injury. But I do have quite a bit of cash remaining, and this is where Tui and Newman come in. So let's just set up round 15 team. Looking at the fixture here, we can probably keep the vice on Bontempelli. We get Nank back on the field. And we'll just leave it right now, because the guy I'm planning to trade in probably be the guy that I plan to skip her as well this this week. But out of Tui and Newman, it's really 50-50 right now. I'm not sure. I know I have until Friday to think about it, but right now I'm still not sure at all. I don't know who to keep out of the two. They both have their pros and cons. And you know they're both scoring pretty well. Newman's got the higher average, obviously. Tui can get a lot of the ball. Like you can bank on at least 20 touches each week from Tui, unless the, unless the opposition happen to tag him, which they haven't as of yet. With Newman, like they both love to kick the ball. Like it's just it's a tough decision. They can both get goals when they need to. Both got two goals this oh well, in round 14, so it just makes things really difficult to decide. Right now, I am leaning towards Tui to keep. Just because of the fact that Newman's a rookie, and I'm just not sure right now if I can trust the rookies. Like, of course, Newman's been a brilliant rookie, and I don't know if you can consider him as one, the way he's been scoring. But I just don't know. Will he slow down? Will he slow down to close the season? I, I just, I'm not sure. And, yeah, Tui plays a massive role on the cat side. I just don't know. But for now, I will trade out Newman. And of course, we've got to get Jake Lloyd into defense because that's where he's supposed to be. Can't have, can't have him in the midfield. And let's see. Main target here, Zach Merritt. He's been a gun. Throughout this season, his last three scores have been massive. He's not going to be dropping in price anytime soon. I'm going to pull the trigger, pull the trigger on this trade. Nick Newman for Zach Merritt. Of course, once again, I still have Friday. To, I still have until Friday to think about it. And you know, I might change my mind. I still could change my mind and trade out Tui for Merritt instead. But right now, I am leaning towards what I currently have right now. And this completes my mid midfield. Very happy with it. A Danger, Tom Mitchell, Zach Merritt, Bontempelli, Pendlebury, Kennedy, Josh Kennedy, Joel Selwood, and Paddy Cripps. Very happy with this midfield. Uh, I'm pretty confident in all these guys to close out the season well. And yeah, let's just hope Hope they live up to expectations. And this leaves me with three trades and 28k remaining. And next week it'll be Stewart down to probably Witherden. And then, of course, Greenwood or Nank up to Max Gorn. Then I'll have the one trade left with a considerable amount of cash, I, I think. 
remaining to make a luxury trade or injury trade maybe an upgrade if you consider one of these guys needing to be upgraded but at that point I'd have to hold the one trade and hold on to Nankin Greenwood in case of injury so yeah this is what I've got right now and probably the last thing to look at is league matchups in my own league I beat Jabin this was a tough matchup beat him by 32 points there and we both had our little disadvantages he had Gary Ablett out and I had Joel Sowards 3 so what could have been for both of us could have both cracked 2400 and in Shorty Supercoach League beat this guy mid price crisis by a couple hundred there which is very handy back up to first place due to percentage and this week I versus Shorty himself, so that should be pretty exciting. So yeah, that should be it for this video. It's going to be an interesting week coming up. Very happy to finish my midfield. Very confident in this group of eight. And yeah, hopefully, like I said earlier, hopefully they live up to expectations. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.